<sighs> I ever tell you about the time my buddy Ellis stole a race car from the mall and drove it over some zombies? The profile of Ellis was a moderate success, so I'll be doing these weekly for a while. And on top of that, feedback was mostly positive, excluding how I had limited use of voice lines, which I will try to rectify, but I have to remind you guys again. I'm working three jobs currently, and digging through a mountain of voice lines is time consuming already. But <laughs> I will try! Now before we get to the next survivor on the voted list, make sure to subscribe to my other channel Wild Such Gaming Streams for archives of my previous streams with friends and fans, and to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell near the sub button. And my buddies Cake and DJ also have channels that you can up to by following the links in the description or in my top comment. Now without further ado, I asked who should follow up Ellis next in the Survivor Profiles series, and it was a close one. But next on the chopping block is Rochelle- Boom headshot! Boom headshot! Boom headshot! What the fuck? Psych! It's Zoe! Let's get into it about the horror movie loving, smart talking, caring, and fan favorite college girl. Survivor profile. Zoe! Now this is coming from the Left 4 Dead Wikia. Her age is unknown, but she's most likely in her early 20s, considering how close to Ellis's age she seems to be since he is 23. And she is somewhere in college, I'd say late term, so typical college age. Hometown, somewhere in the state of Pennsylvania. After spending her first semester holed up in a dorm room watching old horror movies, Zoe was given a choice. Stop fooling around and get her grades up or drop out. Now that the planet's overrun with murderous zombies and all of her professors are dead, Zoe at least has the cold comfort that she's been studying up on the right subject after all. Besides sounding like she's in a porno half the time. Almost there. Almost there. Zoe was a bubbly but sheltered ambidextrous college student at Aldrich in Philadelphia where she was studying to be a filmmaker, but rarely attended class and would spend her academic time watching horror movies and telling her mom that the binge watching on Netflix was research. She got her love for this film genre from her father who introduced her to zombie movies, slasher flicks, and killer clowns from outer space since she was just a toddler. Now you might ask how a horror movie nut got proficient with the firearm. Well, that's thanks to her dad Wade, who was trying to get her to become a police officer giving her practice with the gun at a firing range. Now a typical mom's not going to want her anywhere near that line of work. She wanted her daughter to pursue an education and her father wanted her to follow in his footsteps and it's one of the reasons her parents were divorcing and fighting until the zombie nation attacked. Midway through a parental confrontation the green flu outbreak had just been starting and an infected busted their way in and got a nice bite into Zoe's mom Carolyn's face. In a course of events Zoe's dad won the argument and shoots his now infected ex-wife, although she takes a bite out of him in the process. Since the both of them were horror movie and zombie movie fanatics, they both came to the conclusion that he must be killed before turning. Although if you watched what exactly is the infection in Left 4 Dead video that I put out a few weeks ago, you would see that Wade was most likely a carrier and his death most likely was not needed. This putting Zoe through so much mental stress seeing the death of both her parents in such a heat of a moment action until she met three gentlemen that would become her surrogate family. Lewis, Francis, and most of all Bill kept Zoe sane, and her relationships with them reflect on how a makeshift family kept her grounded so the apocalypse didn't overtake her state of mind. Now her relationship with Lewis is the least prominent one considering they only tease each other and talk about Bill and Francis with each other. There's not much to connect with them. Zoe and Francis differ a lot personality wise. Interestingly enough, she has the same combat capacity as Francis, despite them being of much different physiques, but then again, Coach and Rochelle do too. So that's just video game logic for you. <laughs> Francis has some history with Zoe though. In the beta of Left 4 Dead, when Turtle Rock Studios was the head of development, the same people that fucking did Evolve, let's not talk about that. And when Francis looked like a brutal legend reject, Zoe and Francis were to be romantically involved with each other. But having two survivors of the same group falling for each other proved to be distracting. And once Valve took over, they decided to remove any trace of the romance. Now, when it comes to their interactions with the final product, I'd say they play more as a brother sister combo. So basically, Valve put Francis in the friend zone. But that's okay, cause the friend zone doesn't exist! And Zoe pokes fun at Francis for his infatuation with Rochelle in the passing, and of course, Zoe gets her a new fling with our favorite southern boy. But more on that later. Francis. It's nice to see you still have that in you. Francis? Him? Are you kidding? 
Probably the deepest relationship in the Left 4 Dead series, Zoe found a father figure in Bill soon after the death of her own father. Many have even drawn the similarities of Bill and Zoe to Joel and Ellie from The Last of Us. Whenever Zoe faces emotional distress, she would go to hug Bill much like a daughter to her dad. This relationship is really signified in the Sacrifice comic when Bill sacrifices himself for the group and Zoe's carefree demeanor shifts drastically, becoming more snarky and distant but also more leaderly. But she's mostly snarky and distant towards the second group of survivors. Isn't there some way you could just lower it? I'm sorry, there really isn't. Uh, do we, uh... We need to know some sort of... a password or something? Uh, no. The generator is out of gas. If you get over to the other side and fill it up, we can cover you. That's terrific, Cupcake. Look, is there a man up there that maybe we can talk to? Oh, oh I don't know what to do. Go to hell, Colonel Sanders. <laughs> I can't believe you used to be a con artist. I could shoot you where you stand. Would you lighten up? Kinda like how she is to Nick, but he deserves it. Bill was the leader of the group, and after his death, Zoe starts to become more instructive and dominant in her actions. So maybe Bill's influence shifted her from the reserved horror nerd to a commanding and save her own asses kind of woman. Bill's life was basically there to help Zoe adapt better into the zombie apocalypse, and also to transfer his traits into Zoe so that she may survive and find hope. Speaking of hopeful, Ellis's hopeful puppy dog charms weren't very effective on Zoe as she passes off his flirtations as nothing and going straight to business. Despite shooting him down or ignoring his boyish advances, upon their departure in the Jimmy Gibbs, Zoe says she will miss him and wonders if the teens should have merged. Alice! Maybe we should have gone with him? Maybe he should have come with us? As for Nick, she hates him and wouldn't mind if he died due to his shitty attitude. She doesn't converse with Coach at all, and her interaction with Rochelle is one of relief. Seeing another living woman out there in the dark world, thank God this is getting to be too much of a sausage fest. Oh, thank God! I thought I was the last woman on Earth. Yeah, I know that feeling. Besides her personality, background, and relationships, we also have some quick trivia on her favorite zombie-killing Amazon. She is voiced by Jen Taylor, who has also voiced Cortana in the Halo series, as well as Princess Peach and Toad in Super Mario. The name Zoe is a variant from Zoe, which means life in Greek. It was born by two early Christian saints of the Byzantine and Roman Catholic Church. So you can see the irony of someone that has life in their name versus the dead. Although, technically people are going to run in saying, oh, they're not dead, they're infected. Shut the f*** up. I know what I'm talking about. In the game, resources, Zoe is referred to as Teen Angst and Teen Girl. In the Week 15 survey for Left 4 Dead 2 players, they were asked, what would you bring to be beside you on a boat to an infected free island? And 56% of players said, I'm bringing Zoe. And I can't deny that one, brother. And you may remember in the survivor profile for Ellis, there was a survey for PC and Xbox 360 players of which survivor was your favorite. Zoe came out on top on PC, and Zoe came up on second only to Ellis on the Xbox 360 platform. Now those last few tidbits I took from the wikia, whatever, I'm tired and I have to go back to work. That's all for the survivor profile on Zoe, who should I do next? I'm seeing a lot of videos from Nick and Francis, but I'll let you be the judge. I'm gonna try to release a best of soon, but announcement, I'm gonna try and get wild such coaching videos out every Thursday at 2pm, and the survivor profiles out every Friday at noon. So make sure to subscribe and click the bell to make sure you get those videos when they release. Don't forget to like, comment, and of course subscribe, and until next time, and until the next profile, stay Wow! And I'm gonna go throw up. You maniac! So you blew it up! God damn you! God damn you all to hell! I don't know shit. Wow!